In this video, we're going to learn about electrons, energy levels, and atomic orbitals. The syllabus requires you to be able to explain how electrons are arranged at A levels. If you've completed ITCSC, you would be familiar with your teacher describing the atomic structure as electrons which are orbiting around the nucleus. And an example that he or she might have used is the Earth or satellites which are orbiting the Sun. At ITCSE level, that explanation was acceptable. It would be wrong for us to simply assume that electrons are orbiting the nucleus in either clockwise or anti-clockwise directions. Rather, the more correct way to describe it is that the electrons are found around the nucleus in a series of levels called energy levels. And each of these energy levels can hold a certain number of electrons. The diagram on the right side is simply another interpretation of this dot and cross diagram that we already know how to draw. This is where the nucleus is. The first two electrons are at the energy level which is closest to the nucleus. The second electron shell would mean another energy level, and the third electron shell would mean another energy level. If we are more comfortable with calling these electron shells as energy levels, these energy levels are also called principal quantum number. And each principal quantum number can hold a specific maximum number of electrons. For example, the first energy level, which is closest to the nucleus, is called the first principal quantum number, or n is equals to 1. n is equals to 1, 2, 3, and 4 refers to how far the energy levels are away from the nucleus. And at A levels, it is enough for you to learn until the principal quantum number of 4 only. Each of these principal quantum numbers can hold a specific maximum number of electrons. N is equal to 1 can hold a maximum number of 2 electrons. N is equal to 2 would be able to hold a max number of 8 electrons n is equal to 3 would hold a max number of 16 electrons and n is equal to 4 would be able to hold 32 electrons maximum. In a few minutes, we're going to learn how they are worked out mathematically. A simple way to understand the NAPES concept which is about subshells is that if we zoom in onto these principal quantum numbers, we will see that there are four major subshells which are called S, P, D, and F major subshells. And each principal quantum number that you see here, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4, can have different combinations of S, P, D, and F subshells. We're going to look at it in a few minutes. Now, you can ignore the atomic orbital part and these boxes for a few seconds. Let's focus on principal quantum number and major subshells first. Principal quantum number n is equal to 1 would only have an s subshell. n is equal to 2 would have two subshells, which are S subshell and P subshell. N is equal to 3 would have 3 subshells which is S, P, and D. And N is equal to 4 would have 4 major subshells which is S, P, D, and F. Each of these subshells which is S, P, D, and F have a region of space in which the electrons can exist and that is called the atomic orbital. Now each orbital 
can be occupied by one electron or two electrons maximum. Now we'll be able to see that the S subshell only have one atomic orbital. The P subshell have three atomic orbitals. The D subshell would have one, two, three, four, and five atomic orbitals. And the F subshell can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven atomic orbitals. And since there can only be a maximum number of two electrons per atomic orbital, we can work out the maximum number of electrons that can occupy a principal quantum number. For example, element with a principal quantum number of 1 would only have 2 electrons maximum. So n is equals to 1 would have a maximum number of 2 electrons only. The principal quantum number of 2 would have, let's say, each atomic orbital can occupy 2 electrons. How many atomic orbitals do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So multiply with 4. So n is equal to 2 would have 8 electrons maximum. n is equal to 3. This would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So meaning that every atomic orbital can hold maximum number of 2 electrons multiply with the 9 atomic orbitals. So n is equal to 3 would have a maximum number of 18 electrons. Now n is equal to 4. How many atomic orbitals are there? So there's only 1 in S, 3 atomic orbitals in P, 5 atomic orbitals in D, and 7 atomic orbitals in F. There are a total of 16 atomic orbitals. 2 electrons per orbital multiplying with 16, so we would know that the principal quantum number of 4 would have 32 electrons maximum. Let's take a look at this. The S subshell can only have one atomic orbital and there will always be two electrons maximum in each of these atomic orbital. So the number of maximum electrons that the S subshell can have is two electrons. The P subshell can have three atomic orbitals the D subshell can have 5 atomic orbitals and the F subshell can have 7 atomic orbitals. So doing simple maths, you'll be able to figure out what's the maximum number of electrons that each of the subshell can have as well. To summarize what we have learned so far, we learned that electrons are arranged at different energy levels away from the nucleus which we can also call principal quantum number of n is equals to 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the principal quantum number can have a combination of four major subshells, which are s, p, d, and f. n is equals to 1 would only have s subshell. n is equals to 2 would have s subshell and p subshell n is equals to 3 would have s, p, and d subshell, n is equals to 4 would have s, p, d, and f subshells. A few minutes before, I've shown how the maximum number of electrons for each principal number can be calculated, which is related to our atomic orbitals. One atomic orbital can hold either one electron or two electrons maximum. The S subshell will be able to have one atomic orbital, the P subshell can have three atomic orbitals, the D subshell can have five atomic orbitals, and the F subshell can have seven atomic orbitals. 
By using simple maths, you can try to figure out what's the maximum number of electrons that each subshell can hold as well. Make sure that you're really comfortable with this topic before you move on to the next video because this information will be used again and again for future chapters as well.